right, so let's just do a short little practice, uh, just like for hips and hamstrings, uh, going into fall from summer. <clears throat> Sometimes our activity can slow down or it can pick up and maybe we're doing more since the weather's like in Charleston, especially perfect, where it's not too hot, not too stifling and not too cold. So we'll do a little hip and hamstring opening. So we'll start with just a comfortable seated position. Let your eyes close down for just a moment. And this is just really to let you drop into a space mentally uh, to sort of make a space for your practice where you put all the other uh, busyness and all the other things aside just for a few minutes here. We'll keep this pretty short, probably under a half an hour. So a big shrug and roll with the shoulders. Do that a couple of times. And the next time that you roll the shoulders back, this feeling that the shoulder blades are, are drawing towards each other, not necessarily touching by any means, but it's just uh, coming towards each other on the back and then kind of sliding down. And then we'll drop the left ear over towards that left shoulder and maybe move the chin around a little bit, you know, kind of like you were uh, chasing that tight spot. It's different for all of us, so. And then we'll bring the head up. We'll take right ear over towards right shoulder. And this is where you start to notice where one side's gonna be a little uh, different for you than the other. Left side for me, for example, tends to be very, uh, very tight, a little less uh, cooperative. And you can start to feel those in just these early uh, poses. Interlacing the fingers behind you, extending the fist behind you, giving yourself a little back opening, a little chest opener, slight back bend. And then we'll position ourselves onto hands and knees into a little tabletop uh, position of all fours. On the inhale, softening the belly, tipping up the chin and the tailbone. Exhale, drawing the belly in to curl the chin and tailbone under. Let's do that three more times with breath. So the inhale takes you into that full expression of cow. That exhale takes you into the full expression of cat. And maybe close your eyes here for these last two rounds, just to where you can get into the space of what does it feel like versus what does it look like. I have no idea what I look like in this pose, so. And then we find our way back to that place of tabletop. We're gonna to curl all the toes under, trying to get all of them onto the mat. Shifting the butt towards the heels, giving a little stretch to the soles of the feet. Again, if you're um, doing a, a lot of walking or running or just standing on your feet, uh, these feet can get really tight and this opens up that uh, webbing or that little fascia within the feet. Then inhale back into our tabletop. Exhale, hips up into our first downward facing dog. And maybe in this first one, we come up and down on the toes a few times. We can pedal out the legs a bit. Then the next time we bend that left knee, we're gonna let that right heel feel heavy. Swapping that out, bending the right knee, dropping down that left heel. Then coming up onto the balls of both feet. It's always hard for me not to laugh when I say balls. And then heels down, because I'm basically a 12 year old. Then we're gonna walk the hands back to the feet. And as we get there, we'll fold over these legs, hello hamstrings, shake the head out a little bit here. And if you can't get your fingers to the mat, if you have yoga blocks, you can put blocks under the hands. You could also put hands to the shins, come up a little bit, or just fold over, take a hold of opposite elbow or bicep, chin heavy towards the chest. Little sway side to side here. Then when we find our way back to the center, we're going to walk out to plank pose, so top of a push-up, looking straight ahead so it's not like sad mopey plank. Big breath in, exhale all the way down, uncurl the toes, coming up into a little baby cobra shape, shoulders back and down, look forward a little bit, press into your hands, take another breath in, exhale back up to that all fours, curl the toes under, down dog. I'm gonna slip on my mat. I'm gonna tad two moisturized. Then we're gonna look forward. We'll step this right foot forward between the hands. We'll turn down onto this left heel, coming up into a warrior two shape. So move in and out of this warrior two a couple of times until you eventually, as you lunge into this right leg, this feeling that that ankle is directly under that knee. 
Now the back foot, turn it in a little bit and anchor into that pinky toe of that back foot. And then it's just a very subtle kind of shifting of the weight back and forth until it feels like you're pressing down equally into both feet. And then once we're there, we'll take these arms out into a little letter T shape. Good. Soften those shoulders from the ears. Inhale, we'll straighten this right leg. We're going to pivot. Turn the right foot in, turn the left foot out. Lunge into that left leg. And then again, it's the same idea that we're just kind of rocking back and forth until we find ourselves pressing down into both feet. There's a tendency in these poses where we have two sides to really kind of put everything into that front leg. So this just gives us an opportunity to develop this uh, harmony or this balance between the two feet. And then straightening the leg again, we'll turn back to that right side into that shape of warrior two. As we lunge down into this right leg, this feeling that you were rolling that hip and thigh under, like you were drawing this this back of your right thigh towards the front of your mat, and this other thigh was rolling out. Then left hand, left leg, right hand reaching up, maybe behind you a little bit. Then coming back to the center, we'll straighten that leg, turn, lunge into the left leg, arms into that shape of letter T, okay? Also trying to get the, keep the shoulders over the hips and not just kind of reaching out over this front leg. Reverse the warrior. Reaching a little bit behind us. And you're not like on a death grip on this back leg. Back to the center. We're gonna straighten both legs. All toes facing forward, maybe slightly turned in here. Hands to the hips. A little kind of superhero stance. This is sort of like the, you know, Linda Carter Wonder Woman uh, pose. Tip the chin up, inhale. Exhale, hinge forward. As you start to hinge forward, try not to barrel everything into the heels. Imagine you have your butt right up against a wall, and that was kind of keeping you from uh, toppling over towards the uh, back side of your mat. Chin towards the chest. Hands, you can take a hold of the back of these heels. Maybe draw yourself a little bit closer. Two more breaths. Come up about halfway, lean through the spine, hands to the hips, torso coming up, a little rosy cheek there, a little head rush. I think that's always fun. Turn up those right toes, lunge into this right leg. Warrior two, shoulders down. Like we did in the beginning when we were seated, shoulder blades drawing towards each other, so your chest is very open in warrior two. Reverse the warrior, reaching for that wall behind you. Then we're gonna straighten this right leg, on the exhale, we're gonna hinge forward. As we hinge forward, keep your left hand on your left hip. Right hand's gonna come down to that right shin. Now, as we look down at the right foot, we wanna make sure all the toes are anchored into our mat. Now, for this particular version of triangle, I'll encourage you to let this left hip roll forward. And as this roll, roll left, left hip rolls forward, press that left shoulder back. So there's almost a little bit of a twist that kind of happens. And then we'll reach up with that left hand, pretty strong. I get all sorts of weird little pops in my low back in this pose, like bubble wrap. And then we'll press down into the mat, hands to the hips as we pivot on these heels. Warrior two, letter T arms, big open chest here. Well, your chest might be small and open too, I suppose. Reverse that warrior. Straighten that left leg. Hinge forward, this left hand coming down to that left leg. Right hand, and again, is just kind of guiding this right hip slightly forward. Like if you had a little um, beam of light coming out of this right hip, instead of shooting the wall right in front of you, it's gonna be more on the floor off to the side of your mat. And then that right arm reaching up to the sky. Keep breathing. Then we'll press back up. All toes facing that long side of your mat. Again, maybe slightly turned in. Interlace the hands behind you. This time as the shoulder blades gather on the back, maybe they actually touch here. Then exhale, we'll hinge forward, head dropping towards our mat, arms coming overhead, maybe the hands towards the floor. You can also be here just working the extension of the arms. Pressing feet into the floor. 
torso coming up. Hands to the hips. We're going to heel toe the feet about one step closer. Toes are going to turn out. Feet are pretty wide. And we're going to bend the knees, sink down into our little yoga squat shape. Now, if you can't get this low, you can take blocks, stack those up underneath uh, the tailbone. Uh, you could even just come down like halfway, like in some sort of umpire kind of pose, I suppose you could call it. Elbows into the inside of your knees. Chin towards the chest. And then I like to draw this belly in and kind of curl the tailbone under a little bit. And it really gives you a nice stretch across that low back. And, uh, and this is definitely a hip opener. You might rock back and forth a few times here. I remember when I first started taking yoga and we would do this pose, there would always be a, a yoga teacher with that, what I call the passive aggressive yoga whisper that would say, in some countries, this is how the worker takes his lunch. Or does it annoy me? So then we're gonna bring the hands behind us and we're just gonna come down to the floor. So just walk the feet forward, butt down, soles of the feet together, knees open. Long spine for Baddha Konasana. We're gonna do this two times. The first time we're gonna do it um, very long spine, very active, not even hinging forward, rolling those shoulders back and down, crown of the head, reaching towards the ceiling, chin tipping down. Take another breath in. On the exhale, we're gonna bring this right leg out to the side and we're gonna draw this left heel in. Right hand's gonna to come to the right foot, if you can get there, if you can't, go for you know ankle or shin. Left hand to this left thigh. You're not jamming this left leg down, you're just using this as an opportunity to press that left shoulder back and maybe look over that left shoulder. You could stay right here. This is a full uh, happy expression of the pose. You're getting some hamstring, you're getting some inner thigh. You don't have to do anything else. You could take this left arm up alongside the head, start finding more of a side bend over that right leg. And you could bring this right arm down to the inside of the right leg at this point. You could also be like, yeah, I'm not doing any of that. Let's do two more breaths here. And then we're gonna come back up let that left hand come to the floor and we'll just lean into that left hand and reach up to that right arm just to give that right hip a little love. And as we draw on this right foot, we'll send up that left leg. So same idea, left hand maybe to that left foot, right hand to this right thigh. Long spine, open chest here. Uh, in, in this particular practice anyway, uh, we want to think of each pose as um, giving us an opportunity to create space versus kind of closing into ourselves. This right arm overhead, ignore any popping and crunching sounds. <laughs> I love yoga books that uh, were written in like the 80s and there was one, um, I can't remember who, but all, any uh, side bends would always say that it would eliminate fat from your waist. That's not true. To do so many other things to do that. And take it over to the other side here. Then as we come back to the center, soles of the feet together, Baddha Konasana one more time. Long spine on the inhale. This time on the exhale, we are going to hinge forward. Maybe you take your hands around the tops of your toes. Don't go under and pull the feet up, but maybe you just kind of brace yourself here. Chin towards the chest. Embrace the rounding of the upper and the mid back. And then maybe you bring the hands to the floor. Let your exhale start to kind of chill out a little bit here. Then inhale, we'll roll back up. We'll bring these knees up, send out these legs, give them a little shake. Hopefully my pedicure situation is not too horrible. Uh, we're gonna do one more pose. Uh, this one's taken from the yin tradition, but we're gonna do a little bit more uh, active here. So you're gonna come onto your left side and you're gonna come all the way down. I like to bend this left elbow and use this arm as like a little pillow. Right hand's gonna come right in front of uh, my chest. I'm gonna bring this right leg forward and that right foot to the floor. Now you might be ankle, knee in line with hip. Uh, that's awesome. If you're a little tighter, your leg might be a little lower here. 
And if you're a little looser, your foot might be higher up. Already getting a hamstring stretch here. Press down into the big toe side of that right foot, you get a little bit of calf stuff. So again, you could stay here. This would be a full happy expression of the pose. Any expression of a pose is the pose. Or you could start to drop this right shoulder back, like you were going to look behind you a little bit. Then I let this left hand kind of cradle my head. And I'll see if I feel this today. I'm gonna to bend this left knee, grab a hold of that foot, and get a little bonus quad stretch here. So in the yin tradition, we call this um, cat chasing the tail. We'll call it that today too, but we're not gonna hold it as long as we would in yin. In yin, we would hold this for about uh, three to five minutes maybe. And this one we're just gonna hold for maybe about three more breaths. Gives you that opportunity to hold the pose longer than that 30 seconds, uh, where it is said uh, it, it takes that long for you to kind of stop fighting it. So if you're holding this bottom foot, we're gonna release that leg first and just kind of mindfully re-extend it. Try not to like rubber band it back out there. Then we're gonna bend this right knee and bring that leg back. And I'm gonna roll onto my belly, come up. Little cat cow there. Oh. Then we'll take it to the other side. Now you could certainly just roll over. So I'm gonna come up to my right side and I'm in a straight line more or less. This right arm supporting my head, left leg out in front. So keep in mind, this could be a very different experience for you here. Then maybe I let this top shoulder, the left shoulder kind of drop back and I can let this right hand just kind of hold my head And maybe if you did it on the other side, give it a go here. It might not be as accessible. I could probably be a, a tad warmer to do this pose or to do this option in the pose rather. About four more breaths here. And we'll let go of that leg. Again, very mindful. Bend that top knee. Roll onto the belly. Up to that tabletop. A little bit of movement maybe for the spine. I'm gonna do down dog here. Just because there's a little bit of a twist that happens in that pose. And I feel like down dog is a good opportunity for everything to kind of line back up, if you will. Then we'll come down. Get the legs up in front of us. We'll do one more uh, seated twist here. I'm gonna bring my right foot to the outside of this left leg. Left hand to my right knee. Right hand behind me. Lengthen up the spine. I like to lean back a little bit. Kind of get stuff started there. Then come back up to the center. Keep this extended leg active, that left foot pointing straight up. Twisting into that right thigh. Softening that right palm. Then I'm gonna come back to center. Take hands to the other side of your mat. It's almost like a little twist in a bow there. Then we'll send out that right leg. Step that left foot to the outside of right leg. So now right hand is holding onto this left knee, left hand's behind us. So you find this length in the spine. So as I was saying on the other side, as I lean into it, I kind of start my twist there. And that lets all this stuff kind of come over this way. And then before it has a chance to come back, I come back up tall and I find my little twist to the left side. And then let go of that. A little twist to the other side. Come back to the center. Give your legs a little shake. Scoot forward so we can lie down. Knees to the chest. Maybe happy baby pose. Do this for about three breaths. I like to pop my toes here. I don't know why. Then feet to the floor. Hand on belly, hand on heart. Big breath, belly. 
ribs, chest, open the mouth, exhale. Let's do that two more times. Deep breath. Big open mouth, exhale. Bring down your arms. Send out your legs. Shavasana. Feel free to stay here as long as you like. Wiggle fingers, toes, take arms overhead. Give yourself a big stretch. Bring the feet to the mat, roll to one side, prop up to a seated position. So that's just a um, very quick little practice you can do. It's great to do post run, bike ride, uh, long walk, uh, any kind of aerobic activity. It's also good to just do on its own. Um, you can certainly pair it with some sun salutations in the before it to get yourself a little more heat built. Otherwise, it stands on its own. Thank you so much. Namaste.